happy hours.
to Diatonic Melodic. What a great class that was. Terrific number of entries this year. Very high standard too. And a terrific variety of music and a variety of styles of playing. So thank you very much. A really enjoyable class. Now in melodic playing, what I'm looking for really is evenness of tone. Sometimes when you hear harmonica playing, there's a very big difference between the blow note and the draw note because of the difference in air pressure and in a melodic class what I'm looking for is an even air pressure even flow and a good legato line so that the melody is always clear and always balanced and then on top of that the shaping of the melody expression dynamics all those sort of things will help to achieve a higher mark so let's talk about all the performances we heard. Dave Colclough was first with Marcel and Marcel. The playing was very reminiscent of the great melodic playing of Toots Thielmans and Larry Adler, I thought. There was excellent pace and flow and momentum in the phrasing. I thought you used a very good variety in the tone, although some of the draw notes were perhaps less strong. So it is important to keep that balance of tone uh, unless you're deliberately trying to create an effect. So and I don't think you were. I think it was just perhaps a lack of air flowing over the reeds there. But um, yeah, a beautiful performance from Dave Colclough there. Dave Woodcock was next, Indifference, unaccompanied. Um, this was very expressive playing. I like the way you shape the phrases and introduce dynamics to the music. There's a nice fluency across the range. The tone was very clear. There was a good use of vibrato. What I would say is perhaps... Play with a track just to really lock down the pulse. I wasn't always sure of the pulse in your playing, and I thought playing with a track would just help to lock down the rhythms a bit more. Then Gary Newman was next with Yesterday. A very good single note work here, but I have to say not all the notes were correct, and so a few slips in the phrasing there, but I thought your accuracy of, of uh, intonation was very, very good. Timing with the track was very good overall. The tone was clear, but again, better balance between blow and draw could be achieved, I think, just with more secure breath support throughout there. Then Jim Dunn, Happy Hours. This had nice energy and a great sense of style. I thought the fluency was very good and the breath control was impressive too. Even without an accompaniment, there was a strong sense of pulse and rhythm. The melody came across really, really well, and I like the contrast between the legato and staccato. That's another thing we can um, do with phrasing, isn't it, is to just um, choose between making a smooth line or a broken up line, and I thought you did the, a, a nice contrast between the two. Sometimes you could be clearer with your single notes. Just make sure your tongue blocking or puckering, whichever you use, is really, really clear. Jim McLoon sitting on the stern of a boat, and another song that I didn't catch the title of. Um, this was really expressive and evocative. There was a, a, a nice stillness to the pace, which I think drew the listener in. Generally, the single note work was very good, and the melody came through very nicely. I did enjoy this, and I like the fact that the melodies had a, a wide range to explore. Then, Joss, if that's how you say it. I do apologise if it's not. This was a good version of King of the Fairies. There was a good sense of pulse overall, and you kept the momentum going. The tone was nicely even between draw and blow, and well projected too. There was a real sense that you were using your breath really effectively to produce a nice fat tone. Occasionally the single note melody lost its clarity, some extraneous notes creeping in, so keep working on the tongue, tongue blocking there. Mike Hatchard was next. This was a lively performance. You did well to keep the momentum going, but there were a few uneven moments where you didn't quite keep up the pace. But nice even tone. Uh, you could just get a little bit more clarity in the single note melody at times, but a very good performance from you. Thank you. Mike Putt. This uh, was Shady Grove was next. The melody, I thought, had a wide range, and that was always... Nice to hear you exploring both the bottom and the top of the instrument. I wasn't always convinced that you followed the harmonies with the melody accurately enough. There was a nice variety in the tone, though, and I, I thought the contrast between the lower and the upper octaves was very interesting. It gave a nice tonal variety, and the clarity in the top octave was generally very, very good. Thank you. Then Pam Lee playing The Way We Were. This was a very good version of the tune, I thought. The phrases were really expressively shaped, and I love the way you use vibrato. 
The single note work was clear all the way through. You could just explore dynamics perhaps a little more, but I thought the tone overall was very, very pleasing and it was a very enjoyable performance. Thank you. Paul Appleton, Gypsy Harmonica, out in your garden. This had a really good sense of rhythm and pulse, a nice mixture of melody and chords too. The tone was nicely even and well balanced, really good breath control to keep the momentum going, and I thought you really captured the style very nicely. Sean Cummins, I like the fact that you started with a slow, eerie opening and then going into a strong tempo to contrast that with a fairly clear melody, a little bit more clarity perhaps on the single notes sometimes. I did like the strong tone that you projected all the way through and the evenness and balance was very well managed, so well done. Uh, sorry, I'm just clicking on to now Sean Plunkett, Country Blues. Now, this was a very different style and um, very skilled rhythmic chordal vamping. Good balance between the melodic phrases and the chords. It wasn't exactly a melodic piece, I have to say, but there were lots of good tonal effects and lots of train chugging effects and well-controlled draw bending. Um, the video stopped rather suddenly. I, I felt there was probably more to see, but we uh, we missed the end of that, I think. Stuart Cook was next with Mix Rambles. This was a really clear performance of the melody with some excellent single note work. I like the fact that you added harmony notes on the first repeat of the tune and then you added octaves and then it built to a thicker texture and louder dynamics towards the end. So you'd really given it some thought to shape the performances, uh, performance. And I thought that was a, a, a really good and well-judged performance. Thank you very much. And then the last one, William Dixon, well done, with Lonesome Eyes. This had a very strong, warm and well-balanced tone and some really well-controlled vibrato. The melody was clear overall, and I thought you judged the pace very nicely. It was really evocative, and it drew the listener in. The phrasing was expressive and free overall, without losing the shape of the, the, the rhythm and the phrases. I thought it was a, a beautiful piece of expressive playing, and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. And so the results will be coming very shortly. And now the results of the diatonic melodic class. Very high standard and a large number of people, so I've shed it out a little bit. Um, given a joint third place and a joint second place with an overall winner as well. So we have in joint third, William Dixon and Paul Appleton. In joint second, Stuart Cook and Dave Colclough. And first place, congratulations, Pam Lee. Thank you.